fancy light or something. Oh yeah, that's a good thing. We're still a little dark. Oh, hello! hello. <laughs> Hi, Hi, thank you for joining us for another panel. Uh, we are EGL Treats. I am Oriana and this is... I'm Allegra. Oh, okay. We're, oh, here we are. Just making yeah. sure I can see the chat. <laughs> I have my laptop up here. Hi, I'm Allegra. Um, so mm -hmm. we are joining you guys for another panel today. This one is going to be a uh, Lapin Mystique bunny basket. Um, I'll show you guys, see if we can get in here. They're really little, but these are our little finished bunnies. So we were looking at, whoa, whoa, let's not drop them on the ground. We were looking for um, inspiration for this panel and we saw someone had these really cute little um, shortbread cookie bunnies that they had arranged like a basket and we thought, that's a really cool idea. What can we do to make that more on theme with the mystical? tea garden and thought yeah well what if they were fairy bunnies mm -hmm. should be sturdy enough if you want to you pick it up from our a better a better vantage point so you can see it's like a little carousel of shortbread cookies yeah little fairy bunnies it looks super cute you don't have to assemble like the whole thing together if you don't want to they're also great just on their own um and we're going to be showing you guys uh three things in total so we're gonna do uh, the shortbread cookies themselves. Super easy recipe. So there's shortbread bunnies and the base is also shortbread. Yes. And then inside to hold your little treats is a Rice Krispie nest. Mm -hmm. I know for a lot of um, like Easter treats and whatnot, you see people use like coconut. Coconut nest. Not everybody likes coconut. So Allegra had the great idea of why not just make it um, Rice Krispie treats. And it's a bit more, it's a bit easier to manage than uh, coconut because coconut can crumble apart, especially if you're trying to Build something, build something around with it. it. Yeah. And this looks really adorable just as it is, but I also think it would make a super cute cake topper oh, yeah. as well. Or you can even try and make an even smaller one and put them on cupcakes. Um, and uh, you don't even have to use the bunnies. You can use any small cookie cutter shape, hearts, stars, flowers. Any cutters that you have. Any cutters that you around. have. If you, and um, hopefully everyone got the um ingredients that were posted on the uh rose foray instagram um if you go to their website and go to the uh our panel page you can find a little stencil of the bunny rabbit if you didn't already get that so we're not even doing anything fancy with cookie cutters we're just using we're just the cut stencil cut. and then hand cut them out but yeah um yeah someone says pastel pastry stuff says she's not a coconut gal or no are they uh, I don't know. I'm not, not sure. sure. Anyway, who, whomstever this one particular lady says, I'm not a coconut fan. Yeah, I can take or leave coconut. I like it as a flavor, not so much as a texture. Yo, look so precious. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Supply list and recipe. Yes, Rosé Foray Co. just sent the link if you guys didn't get your hands on the ingredients. Um, yeah. Okay. Hi, Jamie. Hi. hi. <laughs> Jamie says hi. Hello. So, oh. hello to the camera. <laughs> not just, not just my computer screen. Oh. <laughs> so, we're going to get started with the shortbread, which is the first thing we're going to do. Um, I'm going to be using the food processor again for anyone who saw us in our um, Valentine's panel that we did. You know, I like the food processor for dough. So, we're going to be doing that again. Yeah. Um, so, shortbread, just four ingredients, super easy. Mm -hmm. So, we have two and a quarter cup of just regular all-purpose flour. I'm gonna toss that in here. And we chose to make this, actually we saw you guys' feedback, first of all, let me say, and it seemed like a handful of you were trying to bake along with us, which was really awesome. And you said that you guys maybe had not quite enough time. So yeah. we tried to simplify our recipe that we chose a little bit, and then we chose to go with a 90 minute time slot. So hopefully if anyone's baking along with us, which I hope you are, that you can complete this. <laughs> In time, in, time, in the 90 minutes and not feel super rushed. So right. we're going to try and go at a slower pace this time. And if we're going too fast for you guys too, feel free to let us know in the mm -hmm. chat and we can slow down. Um, yeah, so just let us know. Yep. So flour in the food processor, then two thirds of a cup sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this with the food processor because it's um, easiest. Oh, oh no, the rice. Oh no. Um, but you can totally do this by hand. If you just have a bowl, again, just be putting your dry ingredients in there. And then last thing, teaspoon of salt. You can hand mix it if you want to get you can hand you mix get it. yoked. Yeah. And what you'll need instead is just um, uh, forks. And you'll see why in just a minute. So I'm just going to combine these dry ingredients really loosely and then set this aside. 
And the last ingredient here is going to be, we have two sticks of butter that we cubed up and we let get to room temperature. So for shortbread, what you want to do is called cutting in. Um, you're cutting in your fat, which in this case is our butter, and it's getting your butter fully um, coated in the flour and getting it really worked into like a kind of wet sand consistency is what you're looking That's for. That's how you get flaky shortbread, right? So, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're doing this, obviously it's easy with the food processor because we're just going to blitz it all together. Yeah. But if you're doing this by hand in your bowl, you're going to be doing the same thing. So butter cubes into your dry ingredients and then with a fork, mm -hmm. two forks even better, mm -hmm. um, just be pressing your butter through the tines of the fork mm -hmm. and just working it into your butter. Yeah, you don't want to touch the butter with, well, you don't really want to use your hands because then you're going to introduce more heat, which will melt the butter, which if you're doing it will by hand, yeah. make it the consistency not as sandy like she was talking about. Someone's asking, Jamie, Jamie Luna is asking where you got your headpiece. Oh, um, gosh, this is from, I always forget the name, um, Indy Lolita, who is this from? I bought this at RuffleCon years ago, actually, the first RuffleCon. No, it's a, it's a skunk skull, right? It is a skunk skull. Yeah. Um, gosh, who is it? I always forget. Is it on name. the headpiece, maybe? No, I don't think so. When I remember, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we know where to find you, Jamie, so we'll let you know. <laughs> Yeah, I've had this headdress for years now. It's a while. good, reliable one. Okay, so set this to the side and get the butter off my fingers. Mm -hmm. Put this in the trash where it belongs. Okay, <clears throat> and now I'm just going to um, pulse this really quickly. Again, we're looking for a wet sand consistency. Say for us, like mystical skunk vibes. Mystical skunk, yes. For all the forest creatures. <laughs> if you have skunk cookie cutters, go for it. Right, so loud noise warning, obviously, with the food processor. starting to come together. Oops, I'll drop that. Don't know how well you can see here, but it's getting just a loose sand texture. What we're going to aim for is we want it to just start to come together as a solid dough, um, but not entirely form, unlike the tart dough. We're going to finish it in a bowl by hand to get it just together. <laughs> this in a food processor it's easy sometimes for it to get more mixed on the bottom and also for the dry to stay more up top mm -hmm. so it's good to just check and break it up a little bit. Pastel Pace yourself says food processor is life for those who have carpal tunnel. Oh yeah. Oh goodness I can only imagine you can do anything in a processor. You don't have to chop anything, you don't have to mix anything. And Jamie Luna says or lazy people also true. Why not um, both? Why not both? Is it lazy or is it efficient? That's the question. So we're going to give this a little bit of Okay. So this is our gold texture here. So as you can see, it's clumpy and starting to hold itself together, Not but it quite. needs to be combined a little bit more. So if you have a nice counter you can work with, go ahead and dump it directly on your counter. I'm going to do this in a bowl just to keep our workspace a little cleaner. And I'm going to take off my ring so that I don't get cookie dough all over it. Are you done with the fruit processor? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I can move it. And so I'm just going to get in here and use my hands to press this together. Um, like Allegra was saying earlier, you don't want to work with this too long or your work from your hands is going to um, melt the butter out of this. So you just want to kind of piece it together here. Yeah. And then Allegra, if you could lay out a piece of plastic wrap. Sure can. So that's really it for shortbread. 
It's a very simple, straightforward thing. Yeah, so, it's a very, very easy recipe for people who are maybe not as familiar with baking cookies, especially if you're, you know, sort of a, a box cake kind of gal. It's a really good uh, beginner recipe. And I like it because you don't really need a lot for it. It's literally just four ingredients and it's done. Oh, you just uh, shred up this little plastic one in there. Well, now we're here. <laughs> Oh, 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 might have come all they fall out. I'm gonna find some square technical challenges. Where's our scissors? They're uh, right there on the counter. The uh, counter? Right there. Kristen. Mike, oh. <laughs> I was looking for our kitchen scissors. We like have a re rearranged everything to give more space for this panel. No, Which we know. do every time. I don't know where anything is. <laughs> I'm like in front of everybody, yes. Okay. Oh no, no. Done a right job of this ram out. <laughs> the other thing I like it's using like shortbread. Oh no, that's good. What I like with using shortbread for um piping on is I know a lot of people are really big fans of um like icebox type cookies. And they're those are really good structurally, they're like super solid. Um, but they don't tend to taste as good. So I like shortbread because it just has a really nice, simple, clean flavor. That's also really nice to build off of. So what we're going to do is just pat this into a there we go. nice little rectangle for ourselves. Again, it is shortbread, so don't worry if it crumbles a part of it. Um, and then we are going to put it in the fridge to chill just for a few minutes. Um, I think you want to wrap that up, please. Sure can. And we're just going to let that butter chill a little bit so it doesn't get too hot while we're cutting. And also, pro tip, don't uh, don't leave this in the fridge for too long if you're planning to make it in one day, because that butter will harden pretty fast, solidify. And um, yeah, then you'll have a real hard time rolling it out. So just a few minutes. Oh, Moss Badger's on. Hello, oh. thank you for the lovely dress. Yeah, see, this is one that we made last week, and, and it, she is she is a brick. <laughs> She's solid, so don't leave it for that long. Right. This will come back to life perfectly fine. You just need to leave it out for an hour or so, depending on how warm the ambient temperature of your kitchen is. Right. But, but totally the, usable, just rock solid. On the other hand, shortbread also great because if you plastic wrap it like this. Um, you can keep it for up to three days just in your fridge, mm -hmm. or you can pop it in your freezer and you can have it for up to a month. <clears throat> Ooh, that looks My next question was about. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I already got answered. Yes, this is Moss Moss Badger's. Ka, 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 I forget how you say the, the scientific word for bat. Chiro Chiropean? Chiropterin? Chiropterin garden. Okay. And we have this in pink and black. This one's actually we do. This, this is, is actually mine. Her dress. And we were gonna twin. But then I, I got it. it. But then I ordered uh, this is Dolby's bunny basket dress. And she had a sale a while back, so I placed an order for this and it came in the mail like two days ago. And I was like, well, I have to wear this now because it's we're on theme. It's, it's it's the right and it's got it's the right vibe. Bunnies and baskets on it, so. And so we're not twinning, but that's okay. <laughs> Maybe but next time. Close enough. This is the lightest color scheme you will ever see me in. Yes. Um, so while those are cooling, we'll go over the stencil for you guys. So Allegra was mentioning that we did go ahead and make our own design because we wanted the little fairy wings on the bunnies. Um, and so we're just going to be using this drawing that we traced onto uh, parchment paper. Um, that's again with our recipes if you want to trace it. Um, but I don't have parchment paper, regular printer paper is fine. Yeah, just it just picks up the better. It, yeah, yeah well, it'll hold up a little better. It'll hold up against the butter. Right. And then the base is just a circle that we traced from our muffin tin because mm -hmm. we're going to be using a muffin tin um, for those Rice Krispie treats. Mm -hmm. So again, we just freehanded and went for it. Yeah. But if you have a stencil, what's way easier. Yeah. But I wanted to kind of do, um, I keep saying stencil, but I mean. Um, you, you good? Yeah, I don't know if that's a little bit, but it's she's, fine. She's turned into a frog. Um, uh, what was I saying? Cookie cutters. If you have cookie cutters. <laughs> if you have cookie cutters, that's a really good alternative. 
Um, <clears throat> sorry, my throat. Do you need to take over? <laughs> um, but so we went ahead and traced these, um, and we're going to show you that you can totally make your own designs this way by just tracing a shape that you want and just mm -hmm. using a paring knife to cut it out. Yeah. So you can make any shape that you want that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and set up for rolling out our shortbread. You want to take over for a second, dear? Let's see what's going on in the chat. You both look amazing. Thank you. The Dolby dress is so cute. Yeah, I really wanted a dress from from Dolby, and I was waiting for her to have a sale. Because even though I, if I had that much money to spend on a Dolby dress, I would hard no doubt about it. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna wait for sale, and then I bought one. Um, and, and she came just on time. And she came just in time, and she's super good. And I'm, I don't know if you know anything about me personally as a Alita, but I love anything in an unusual colorway. Anything that's like going to be difficult to coordinate, I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's it. Which is why I loved this pink bat situation. It's such a nice soft pink, and I really love the gray, the almost purplish gray accent. Um, so I really wanted this one. And then this one, of course, is orange, which you don't see a lot in Lolita orange at all. Is pretty rare. Orange is pretty rare. So I was like, yes, give it to me. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So for rolling out our uh, shortbread dough, now that it's had some time to rest, we're going to roll it out between a piece of parchment, which we have this super cute floral parchment that we found on at uh, Joanne's, Joanne's the other day. And piece of parchment on the bottom and a piece of plastic wrap on top. Yeah. Um, if you're going to roll out your whole dough, you can actually just reuse the same parchment, sorry, uh, plastic wrap that you rolled up your dough in. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do just one cookie, so I'm just going to break a chunk of dough off of this. It's going to be for our bottom piece, yeah? Uh, we'll cut it all out of one piece. Okay. Um, so I don't need to roll the whole thing out. No, we sense. don't need the whole thing. So depending on how many cookies you want to make, um, you definitely don't need the full shortbread cookie recipe. If you're going to make just one bunny basket, you mm. could probably get like three or four mm -hmm. out of the recipe. Yeah, if you have, if you have a cookie cutter you're using, it probably be could probably turn out a couple more, a couple of these at once, but since we're hand cutting everything, we're just going to show you one basket today. For, yeah, so it'll spend the whole time for just cutting out for bunnies. time purposes. Yeah. Um, I love greens and royal purples in the litter. Not used it. Absolutely agree. Purple is so beautiful in the litter, just in general, and it's. I think it's also really hard to match purples because if you know one brand does a purple and people do purple so infrequently enough that if one brand does purple and another one does purple, they're going to be like. Not the same color. Yeah. Um, but as if you have pinks or something, there's so many different pinks that different brands do that you can kind of make them marry a bit a bit better. Yeah. Um, same so with same with green. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out, and we're gonna aim for about an eighth of an inch, but we're just gonna eyeball it. Yeah. Um, I meant quilt, so I love that it's a patch of her. Yeah, it's so cute. It just reminds me when I saw it. It reminds me of. Um, the very first scene in Kiki's delivery service where she's just like lying on the hillside with her radio and her little green dress. That's exactly what I thought of when I saw this. I had that fantasy of like, yes, I'm gonna go lie out in the grass on a nice sunny hill and just and be cute. That's the vibe. looking pretty good Ooh. and then we forgot to mention um we already have our oven preheated to 350 so that's all ready to go mm. first thing you want to start with mm. Mm. Right. that is looking good so we also have two separate sheet pans ready already. So we're going to use our bigger one to have our bunnies on and we're going to put our circle base on its own sheet pan. Because it's going to be a bigger size cookie, it's going to need a little longer to bake than the actual bunnies. So it's just easier that you keep them separate so you can pull them out when whenever each shape is done. So I'm going to take our plastic wrap off the top here and take our should we circle? Shall, and we, get in nice? Shall we get in closer? Yes. Um, become camera woman, <laughs> camera leader. Let's see, there we go. Okay. So I just have a paring knife and this circle, and I'm just gonna go around delicately, cut that out. 
Now a tip for getting shortbread off in a clean shape. I'm also going to cut kind of a square around it. And this is so that it's easier to just kind of pull away the parts that you don't want without tugging on the whole dough, which might make other areas of it delicate or might ruin your original shape. I'm going to go grab a spatula really quick. Spatula. We were watching uh, Elliot Chan's panel last night and they have the greatest setup. Oh, their setup is so good. So someday. Someday, someday we'll become powerful like them and have two cameras, but not today. <laughs> Okay, so obviously the circle was the easy part. The bunny, you may have a little more um, like raggedy edges. So I'm just gonna hold my knife straight up and down and cut along that shape, just kind of pressing, you know, up. Stab your way around the Stab bunny. Stab your way around your bunny. So you may have some more jaggedy edges because it's a harder shape to follow along with, hmm. but don't worry about that. The way that it looks when it is um, still in the dough form, it's not going to be what it looks like once it's baked. It's going to puff up just a little, which will soften the soften edges. Soften those edges. Yeah. yeah. Can you see her? I'm just getting arm. Yeah, I'm just getting arm. Oh, here. Why don't you go on the <laughs> other side? On, I'll go on the other side. Let's go on an adventure we, around the horn. <laughs> we frequently have this trouble because I'm right-handed and Allegra is left-handed. So, so we we're are always constantly just kind of dancing around each other. Elliot Chan says that they use their laptop and their phone, which we got to figure out. We got to we, we, we we get a better setup. We have a laptop setup. and a phone. We just need to figure out how how the whole dual. I don't know. We're, we're, we're millennials. We don't know technology. That's not true at all. But <laughs> we're not as Twitch savvy. We only time we use Twitch is to do panels with you guys. So this is still a learning curve. Elliot Chan, if you want to help us, we're, if you want to, if you, if you would like to uh, give us a Boot, co boot camp course on how to make Twitch streams look pretty like yours. We are more than, we would be more than happy to uh, to have to do that. <laughs> so we have our first bunny cut out. And again, same thing. I just cut a little uh, square around him and now we can free him from his confines. Mm -hmm. and just peel these edges off yeah don't don't attempt to 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 do that on the paper pick up the whole thing pick up the whole thing yeah because that shape is so delicate that if you try to pick up just the rabbit you're probably gonna probably gonna lose some parts or lose a lit limb or something or anything that gets stuck oh, oh no see, see you, this is what happens soon. but the other great thing about shortbread is you that it's it very together. easy it's to paste together so we're gonna fix our little friend here do not worry Et voila. Ta -da. So for our size, we found that about six bunnies is the right size. <laughs> the chat is laughing at us. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure. We are here to amuse, my friends. <laughs> um, we found that six bunnies works, but honestly, just uh, take a look at how big you want your own basket to be, mm -mm -mm. and uh, just just eyeball from there. Because it depends too if you are copying the exact same size bunny. We made these tiny also because it's um, it's good practice for learning how to flood icing in a smaller space. But if you're making something bigger, you may not need six bunnies. Mm -hmm. Or since you're already here, you might as, you could also just cut out as many bunnies as you want. Yep. And just bake them all off. And then you could have a, some bunny friends to go with the bunny basket. All right, attempt number two, <laughs> redemption arc. <laughs> nobody, nobody move, nobody breathe. All right, uh, take our parchment off. <laughs> All right. So there we go. Ta -da! 
An intact bunny. An intact bunny to go into the field of flowers. Up the bow. Let's see if I can't put this down so I can look at the chat. Hi, hi, Ari on the call. Ellie Chan said she will they will be glad to help us. But yay! <laughs> Thank you, Elio. Thank you. We need all the help we can get. So honestly. Um Jim Lewis is checking. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of bunny emojis. Smiling <laughs> emojis. And some uh no oh, for our <laughs> For our gentle bunny that for that our lost, gentle bunny that lost his ears yeah i was very impressed that i'm like oh my gosh at least have got two cameras and a powerpoint how what can we count if we compete <laughs> bunny number three coming in hot oh and just a thank you to you guys for joining us like, yeah thank for you another for one joining us things. we have a lot of fun with this <laughs> always a good time. Mm -mm -mm. All right, three bunnies down. So I will say that, um, again, if you have a cookie cutter, obviously this is going to go a lot faster. Mm. But I really like actually just the, the simple nature of just having a quiet time and tracing something. Mm. What panels have you guys caught so far, I wonder? We caught some of the Get Ready With Me and the uh, Last Unicorn panel. Mm -hmm. What did we catch yesterday? Yesterday we watched the Gothic Garden. Oh yeah, that was really cool. I like that a lot. Yeah, it gave us a lot of good ideas. We have a patio that we're, we're someday going to try and make a little more verdant. And um, what was the one before that? <laughs> We watched, oh, Ellie's it was panel. Ellie's panel, oh, yes, that we watched. Yes, we watched that as we were eating dinner. A great start to the weekend. Mm -hmm. And Coco says, OMG, thank you. You're welcome. We loved it. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were like, how do you have gothic garden? <laughs> Bunny number four. All right, so far only one bunny has lost its ears, so this is going well. I'm glad everyone enjoyed my panel because I wasn't sure about it. Ha ha ha. No, we enjoyed it a lot. And it was, it's always fun when somebody has a hobby and they want, they're excited about to share it with everybody. I think that's always the most entertaining to me personally. My mom has a super green thumb and anything that she plants grows, but I am very inept when it comes to gardening. So all of the tips in the panel were great. Yeah. I have definitely also killed a cactus. <laughs> I'm definitely in that club. Uh, gotta go back and catch the replay of Gothic Garden. I missed it. Looking forward to that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, the being able to replay things, I think, is one of my favorite things mm -hmm, about these events. It's hard to catch every single panel because um, people got busy lives. So it's good to... Like on the weekend, we'll just, after the panel, we'll sit down and have breakfast and watch a panel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's also really nice because you can have a panel going on in the background and doing something else. Um, people are talking through it. I have a really short attention span personally. So it's really good for me because I can be playing on my Switch or whatever and listening to a panel <laughs> at the same time. It's easier for me to pay attention to. Moss Badger says, I also need to go back and catch the replays. I've been in a black hole of shipping stuff out. Oops. Oh, thank you for your thank you for your thank you for work. your noble sacrifice and your noble service to the cause. Moss Badger, I am the I also allowed a succulent to die. Not sure how. <laughs> no. Well, now there's just more of us in this club. Is all. Hugo says succulents are hard. Succulents are hard. Either they need like 
nothing from you or they need like everything from you or like sometimes they don't need anything and sometimes they need also i probably also killed the succulent i think i had one of those bear paw succulents that have like the really chubby uh i don't know if you call it lee a leaves i don't know and I, all the little paws fell off and i felt so bad <laughs> that's me right now says so possible place yourself doing my makeup while listening to the panels yep that's the way to do it um, Jamie Luna says, all the panels are already up on YouTube right now, by the way. Yeah, so that's oh, a nice. Missed. Get on it. <laughs> all right, we are on our final bunny. Bunny number six. Noble Ghost Fashion says, I have a bear paw succulent. They're really delicate. Yeah, they're really oh. delicate. I think I got it when I was, like, a, a teenager, so I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So, pour one out for you. Oh, and I'm the succulents. The bear succulents. The succulents that I deserve better than the succulents that have come before us. <laughs> oh, jeez. Number six. Yay. See our little, our small army of bunnies. Yes. Da, da, da. Okay. There we are. Okay. And these are going to go, I'll move the camera back over here so we can do, do, do. so we're gonna throw these guys in the oven and because they're so small um this should really only take about 10 minutes or so to bake so. Um, but i'm gonna check on them about every four or five minutes just to make sure that we don't get any overly brown edges and while I babysit our little bunnies in the oven, Allegra, if you want to do the Rice Krispies. Bunny Brigade, that's, that's, Bunny Brigade. that's the phrasing that we were looking for. Okay, I'm going to move the camera. Sorry I'm moving the camera so much. I just... Someday we'll have a better setup. Someday we'll have a better Please setup. With us. I apologize. I'm going to catch my skirt on fire. <laughs> She's got a lot of food today. I have two petticoats on because this skirt is incredibly... I don't know, you probably can't see, but the skirt is incredibly powerful. Like, look, look, look at how much fabric I have. It's, it's incredible. Uh, all right, so I'm going to, would you have my ingredients, please, too? Yes. Delivery on its way. So we are going to make Rice Krispie Treats. Da, 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 da. So here I have my ingredients. You can't see them. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, down here. All right, so I have marshmallows. This is eight ounces of marshmallows and half, I've separated half a cup out from the eight ounces because we're gonna add this in at a later stage. Then we're gonna add these boys in. Got three cups of Brand X crispy rice <laughs> cereal. For, for the people. Yeah, the non We're not brand non denominational. <laughs> crispy rice. Um, three tablespoons butter and some vanilla extract. Now, these are going to make way more baskets than uh, bunnies. I already have the recipe for you guys. Um, so, this is going to make about, I'm going to say about six, six to eight of. These guys, a which, is, amount of which is way more than you're gonna have bunnies for, unless you go crazy and make a bunch of bunnies. But you could do what we did, which is snack on these while we're assembling. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so to get started, have my soft pan, put it on medium high heat. Nice. I'm going to toss in a butter. <laughs> no, do not finish those crispies. That's yes. right. And just give that a stir, but I'll melt evenly. All right, I'm gonna let that melt for a bit. Oh, and could you grab me the um, cooking spray? Oh yeah, sure, it's on the counter right now. Oh, it's right here, hello. And make sure to spray your muffin sheet or muffin tin, because as we all know, Rice Krispies stick, stick to everything, stick to everything. This is not a spray. All right. Go. Jamie Lewis says, are you really baking if you're not snacking at the same time? Yeah, that's it. 
honestly, when I used to still work in bakeries, that was basically how I stayed alive, was just like nibbling on the odds and ends of things <laughs> as actual baking was going on. That's right. Never trust a skinny chef. chef is my motto. That's right. I used to work in the uh, dining hall at my college and um, every Friday they would bake cookies. They would get like cookie dough from the a local cookie company or a local like small cookie company. They would get dough and they would bake it fr fresh. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember being like, oh, the cookies came out of the oven. I'll just take a small stack <laughs> with me before I go on break. Because they would disappear like immediately. Oh yeah. Because they're, you know, fresh cookies, man. You can't. Yeah. So I'd be like, oh, me first, but yes. Elias says, <clears throat> uh, cooking spray, the true MVP. Truly. Truly. It's true. You can also use butter. You can use coconut oil, coconut if, you oil want to. if you want to. Oops. Almost melted. Get my oh, minutes. Minute Check left. these bunnies on your bunnies. Here's a question for you guys. Do you have any favorite spring candies? Ah, like East or if you if you are celebrate if you are someone who celebrates Easter, you have any favorite Easter candies or just candies you like to have in the springtime? Yeah. I like Cadbury cream eggs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like uh I like any any of the gummies type stuff. Any of the gummies? Okay. Now that this is boiling, oh no, we've like converged at the same time. I'm gonna turn it oh, fine, down yeah. a little bit. I'm going to add my marshmallows, not the half cup, this is the, the remaining of the eight ounces, into our butter. Now we're gonna mix. I'm gonna mix this until it becomes a nice, even consistency. I don't know if you guys can see what's happening in here. Ooh, let's see. Reese's, Cadbury eggs are too sweet, <laughs> Nicole says. Cadbury eggs are very sweet. I just like Cadbury chocolate. I usually like nibble on them and then put them back and then nibble on them. Mmm. Noble Ghost Fashion says, I love those nougat eggs that are covered in pecans. Ooh, I don't know what you're getting. That sounds great. That sounds delicious. Where are you getting your candy from? Dang. My mom buys a lot of seeds, seeds candies for Easter. So we get those like giant, like these giant eggs. Yeah, like a fist size, a fist size chocolate, chocolate egg. egg. <laughs> we have those, which I, 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 I quite enjoy too. Oh, Moss Badger says, I used to get these tiny chocolate eggs that were pastel and speckled with tiny robin's eggs. Those are my favorite. Those the are, robin egg yeah. pattern is one of my favorite spring things mm -hmm. ever. They're just so They're cute. They're so cute. I made a um, robin's egg cake once upon a time. I made like a hummingbird kind of cake oh, yeah. uh -huh. and then I covered it in a light blue, very, very light blue frosting. And then I just mixed some um, black food coloring with a little bit of water and took a paintbrush and just like did like this. Oh yeah. And so yep. it sparkled everywhere. My yeah. dear, do you mind if I get in the oven? Yes, do it. I check our bunnies. Three. We're almost there. Okay. Bunnies have not gained any color yet, so I'm just going to turn them around. Okay, I'm going to switch the position with our base because that one is getting a little color. We'll check back on that in another few minutes. Okay. All right, so now that my marshmallow and butter mixture is fully melted and incorporated, you can see, you, you, you know what this looks like. <laughs> I'm going to toss in my vanilla extract and this just add, make more flavor, more, more, more interest than just sugar mm -hmm. flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and give that a stir. Da -da -da. Now we are going to add our Rice Krispies. And I'll spill them everywhere. Yes, I am spilling them everywhere. <laughs> it's fine. And our, oh, Dear, let me uh, get these off this Oh, geez. Oh, geez. <laughs> turn the. Nobody saw that. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Add our remaining half cup. 
And the, the remaining half cup that we added at the end of marshmallows really just makes a lighter, kind of fluffier texture and gives it more of an authentic kind of marshmallowy taste, I find. Um, it gives it a really nice chew, really nice chew. It makes it a little bit lighter than, than just adding your marshmallows in all at the beginning. And they will um, incorporate, um, and I just like to mix it until the marshmallows that we added in the first time the ball, um, just start to melt, just until I can't really see them anymore. Um, yeah, and then Looking good. we're good to go. Yeah, I actually never just set aside some of the marshmallows or Rice Krispie Treats before. I was just kind of like, eh, Rice Krispie Treats can't be that hard. Just toss everything together. But it actually makes a surprising difference. I Someone on the internet suggested doing that, and I was like, all right, try it. Not too much more of a commitment. <laughs> no, <laughs> it but it's great. worth it. It's super all worth right, it. So this is looking done. So as you can see, it's all kind of incorporated. You can kind of see the, the marshmallows. We oh! Nobody saw that. You can kind of see the marshmallows we added in. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to not step in the Rice Krispies I dropped on the ground. I got it. <laughs> you want uh, one of those? Yes. Okay, now I'm going to take a spoon. No harsh more marshmallows are harmed in the making of these treats. I can't guarantee that. I cannot <laughs> confirm or deny for legal reasons, whether or not any marshmallows were harmed. Okay, so I'm gonna take my metal spoon and I'm going to spray it with some cooking spray and this will just help um, nothing stick to anything while we're plating these bad boys up. Okay, so take a scoop and we're just going to poop. And then I'm gonna take the back of the spoon. You can't, you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> take the back of the spoon and we're just going to Mush it around the sides and up the sides so you get a little hollow. And these can be as neat or as rough as you want because they're going to be nests. They don't have to be perfect. And there you go, a nest. I'm going to go ahead and finish. This looks like these cookies are about done. Yep, cookies are looking good. I can, I can move. Uh, trade spaces. I'll okay. trade spots with you around this. So we have our little circle base is cooked. And then our bunny brigades. Just a little golden around the edges. You don't want them super dark, but these guys are ready to go. We're gonna set these aside to cool while Allegra keeps working on the baskets. For those of you that, that celebrate different things around this time, I know isn't um my thing at Ramadan soon. Oh, it should be, I think. For those of you who, who, who celebrate different holidays around this time, do you have any traditional um, things you like to, to cook and or bake? For example, my family around Chris around Easter time, we're not, we're not super, my family isn't really religious. We just like to do holidays just for fun. Just, just like to do fun just stuff. To do, just to do something. Um, my mom likes to make a, uh, a uh, um, we like to have danishes for breakfast or like a Dutch baby. Um, and she made an egg, an egg wreath one year where she got some um, Easter eggs that were hard boiled and dyed and then she braided them into a uh, some bread and made a wreath, which turned out really pretty. Um, that was a ham. <laughs> I think a ham is pretty typical for American Easter's. At least in, at least in, at least in the parts where I grew up. I don't know about you guys. Big fan of ham. Roast ham is Roast delicious. Ham is delicious. Let's see. Nicole goes, says, can you mail me a bunny basket, please? Uh, I, Wait, we'll, we'll find we, a way. <laughs> we could, but I can't guarantee it'll get there in one piece. Let's see. She also says, I found out last week the Eggs Benedict and smoked salmon sandwiches are tradition for people. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. I love Eggs Benedict. Eggs Benedict is probably one of my favorite ways to enjoy an egg. No, well, Ghost also says, oh gosh, now I'm craving Rice Krispie treats. Ha ha! We got plenty. I'm going to get about, about eight of these. Yeah, they're looking good. 
Can you finish with that pot here? Just about. You want to put this on? <laughs> I have a terrible habit of wondering if she's done with something and then taking it and aside and cleaning and washing it. it and I turn around and it's gone. <laughs> and she's like, where did you like, Where is it? It's in the drying rack ten times. And I'm like, oh my god. You still using that? This is gonna need to get soaked instead of washed. It's got it's got crispies. It's got crispy adhered to it. <laughs> Alright. So our nests are just about ready to set. Honestly, I think the hardest part about prepping for this panel was not eating all of not the candies that we bought for this. All the candies. It's just we... snacking on one here or there, and then we're like, wait, we need some for the actual basket. We bought we bought a bag of gummies to go with this, and we ate. We worked through them pretty fast. Most of them. We were like, we should leave some to decorate with, but then we ate the rest. So here are our nests and these i'm just gonna set these aside to set for 10 15 minutes you just don't want them to fall apart after you take them out just so they keep their shape so i'm gonna put these aside and then oriana's gonna talk to you about icing yep icing is the next part and i'm also going to bring over our candies that we saved so we have those ready to go at the end here Alice, 12-20 pieces. I love smoked salmon. Elia Chan was talking about doing in smoked a smoked salmon um, for Ursa Major tea tea sandwich for Ursa Major, which sounds like a perfect idea. Salmon for the bears. Salmon Very for cute. the bears. Yeah. Okay. Let me grab a whisk really quick. And then we're gonna talk with you guys about icing. Icing. So we still have to let our cookies cool down a little bit. Obviously you want a cool cookie to be frosting on so it'll just melt, melt. everywhere, yeah. Um, but I thought this would be a cool opportunity to teach some people about um, flooding cookies um, because it's a really cute and simple thing that you can do and kind of have something special to still celebrate at home. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a royal icing recipe that's a little bit different than a regular recipe. Um, what I have here is egg white powder. Yeah, this will drop more things, things in this really panel. Well. <laughs> it's egg white powder, um, or you could have um, meringue powder. Um, especially if you're doing a vegan version of the recipe, a vegan meringue powder would be the perfect substitute. Mm -hmm. um, but traditionally with royal icing, it's going to be powdered sugar and then liquid egg whites, like raw egg whites. Um, and that works great if you have a lot of patience, which has always been the thing that really uh, kicked me in the butt with getting perfect iced cookies, mm -hmm. um, is it's really hard sometimes to just set them aside and make sure nothing at all ever happens to them while they're setting. Mm -hmm. um, but this recipe I came across a few years ago mm -hmm. when I was looking for a gingerbread icing recipe. That's right, yes. Yep, and it sets lightning fast. It's super fast because the eggs are already dried so it wants to go back to that dried state. Um, and the best part about using uh, dried egg whites is that then it's just your sugar, your egg whites, and the water. And the great thing is you can control the amount of liquid in the recipe mm -hmm. because egg whites are always gonna have different amounts of water and protein depending on how old the egg is, what sort of chicken had the egg. But with this, you have perfect control, so mm -hmm. it's great. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We have two cups of powdered sugar and two tablespoons of our egg white powder. Marine powder also is something that if you haven't heard of it before, you can usually find it at like a Michael's mm -hmm. is the most reliable place I have mm -hmm. found it. Let me do whisk this together. Oh, and I just remembered the name of uh, the shop. It's, um, Oh, and it's away from me again. Sweet Mildred. <laughs> ah, forget Sweet it. Mildred. Sweet Mildred. All right, let's all combine together. And we have our three tablespoons of water. Oh, I'm just adding that in. So I found that the base recipe is perfect exactly as it is for this size cookie. Um, it's a great consistency both for outlining our cookie to create a little edge 
and also for flooding the cookie with icing. But if you're using a bigger size cookie than our little tiny bunnies, um, go ahead and add more water when you're ready to do the flooding part because you'll be able to spread it out faster. Um, because this recipe dries so quickly, if it's not the right consistency for the size of your cookie, you may end up with kind of like sections that have dried before other parts of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. always good to have a tester cookie even just to see if the consistency is what you're comfortable working with. You don't want your stuff to start setting before you're done with it. Yeah. All right. You can see this came together, super smooth icing. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to add a little extra water to it today. It's a little thick. Uh, Ellie Chan mentions, oh, I like this method of, method of making bra icing. Yeah. I had never heard about it before either. And she was like, behold my power. And I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh. It's perfect for gingerbread houses because it dries so quickly that you don't have to worry about like parts of the house sliding off mm -hmm. or like things falling over. <laughs> my dear, would you grab a bowl for us to uh, add some colors to? Yes. What kind of bowl? Uh, just any of our little white bowls would be perfect. How many you want? Just one. Don't fall into the camera. <laughs> okay, so this is the consistency I find easiest to work with, mm. where it can kind of run down. So I'm going to put half of this in another bowl, and that is going to be for the wings of our bunnies. And this half here, the white portion, is going to be for flooding our bunnies. Mm. So I have these little toothpicks because I like using gel food coloring. They're like really, really potent. You can see that mine are super old and used up because I've had them for so long because you don't really need very much. Mm -hmm. And with the um, water-based ones, the little kind of usually seem like little droplets of food color, um, those are adding extra water to your icing. So just be aware of that if you are using those. So we decided arbitrarily uh, purple for the wings. So I just got a little glob on this toothpick. We might get that twisted off and into the side there. Well, I tried to mention this because also not having to do it with a whole egg white and then not knowing what to do with the yolk. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Gel is definitely superior. Yes, I also agree. I used to just add my whatever leftover yolk or white to like a, a, a scrambled egg I make the next day. Yeah, that always works. I made a lemon meringue pie for Easter and um, we had like four leftover egg yolks and I made a four egg yolk scrambled egg oh in the God, morning. So rich. And I was like, I'm, I might die, but hey, I'm gonna live while I can. <laughs> Mixing away. Okay. So we have our lovely lilac for the wings here. Oh, no, you can use any color you got, but we this is just what we have and we like purple. Very Easter Easter or spring color. Yes. And the other thing with this icing is because it sets so fast, um, and really even with regular royal icing, um, you'll want to dampen <laughs> You want to dampen a paper towel um, and keep that on top so of your icing so it doesn't it. get a skin on there. Yeah. So we're going to set that aside for when we are ready with it. And I'm going to go ahead and fill our first piping bag. So I find this easiest when you can change tips. I'm going to use tips for a little better control. If you don't have any tips, don't worry about it. Just cut a small hole to begin with. Um, but if you do, or if you never see something like this, it's like a little coupler. So I'm gonna start out with a really tiny number two piping tip. You can see it's like crazy small. So if you're not using piping tips, just cut a very small hole, probably maybe about two toothpicks worth in size. And I'm going to set this in a mug so the icing doesn't come off the end. So 
So when you already have a piping tip on, pro tip, kind of bend it in half and upwards, and then put that in the bottom of your cup so that you don't just have uh, an open opening for your icing to be flowing out of. Mm -hmm. Little spatula. Uh, also, it'd be fun if you wanted to do a more gothic one to do like black bunnies with red that eyes. That would be really cute. Or with like little devil horns instead of wings. That would be cute. Okay, we'll set this aside and bring our bunnies back out here. Yeah, I think I don't remember who it was. Maybe, um, I think I don't remember in a bit. But somebody recently did like a little uh, devil horn goat, like demonic cute goat cookies. That was really great. Turn the bunnies to you. Yes, our bunnies are back with us. Let me adjust this camera so yes. you guys can see. Shall we? Um... Yeah, if you want to turn it around. Yeah, I can turn the camera around. I'll get these guys set up. Oops, not that. I'm going to do... Can we... Um... Let me see. How to do this? Oh, I know. Haha, <laughs> taking you guys on a tour of the kitchen. On an adventure. On an adventure. To find the right angle. Oh no, did I close the stream? No, I didn't. Oh geez. I've done it now. Oh, all I don't know if you guys can hear me, but oh, there, there we are. We had some, we had some technical difficulties, but we're back. Oh, all right. So all I did in the, in the meantime, are we live? I think so. Yep. Okay. Okay. All I did in the meantime was I put some. Just hold the camera. I put some of our uh, icing into these convenient little measuring cups I have, and I'm just adding more gel color to that. And the black is going to be for the eyes of our little bunnies. Add a little more color to get that more concentrated. And then we also are going to do some pink and some blue to be little accents on the wings. Yes. So I can can see. Left challenge again. Oh goodness. I was like, this is the best angle for this. Okay, and just one more. And the pink is gonna be accents for the wings and of course also their little ears and noses. Ooh, this one's starting to get a little dried up. <laughs> Sorry, we disappeared. I was trying to uh, adjust the camera and then my phone was like, oh, you meant close? And I was like, no. <laughs> yes. 
someday if we have two cameras, then we won't need to touch anything. <laughs> okay, there's our colors mixed up. Da da da. And we can go ahead and start with lining these. So for flooding cookies, the first thing you want to do is create little barrier outlines to hold your icing in place. So we're just going to follow along the edge of our cookies here. And you don't have to press too hard. Just let the icing flow and follow with you. And for the ears here, I particularly recommend that you almost stop piping so that you can get a little bit better of a definition. I'm going to do this one solid white just to see. And we'll set that to the side. My consistency is a little thinner than ideal, but that's okay. And we'll just go ahead and do the same here with all of these. This one I'll give individual wings. So it's totally up to you how you want to color these. If you want, like Allegra was saying, to have just a solid bunny and do that in black and white, or if you want the wings to be a different color, totally free game. Those up there. Let's see how we're doing for time. We got half an hour left. Perfect. Plenty of time. So once we do these outlines here, we are going to need to let the outline set before we can fill them in because it's going to be holding back the rest of our icing. Mm -hmm. We're going to hold on there for a second. Mm -hmm. So let's see if I can put us back on the, <laughs> on tripod, the tripod and sure. not close the stream. Shall we? Pray for me. All right. Okay. Moss Badger says, speaking of goats, is that a goat in the corner of the counter? Yes, it is. It's a, that it's is a, it's a ram. Our sheep it's are a ram. ram. Yeah. He's actually a uh, bag. Yes, he is. Shall I, do a, shall I do a show and tell? While we wait for these little guys to dry. Mm -hmm. um, I actually made him. Well, I, I bought... Well, I got bought the stuffy. I bought the stuffy. I was thinking maybe someday I could do a panel teaching people how to make this. So I bought the stuffy. And then what I did was I cut a hole in his spine, took out some of the um, stuffing, and sewed a like makeup pouch, or something. <laughs> a makeup <laughs> proof that I have used him, a makeup, I sewed a makeup pouch that I got at Daiso for a couple dollars, and the inside's red, which is uh, appropriate. Yeah, a, little <laughs> a, little, a little, maybe a little too close to the nose, <laughs> close to the nose there. Um, stitched it in, hand stitched it, because I think it's a little too chubby. A little too awkward to put in a uh, sewing, machine. sewing machine. And then, ta-da, and then I attached handles. And I wore this for, I think, the last in-person event, event we went to. We went to. At, um, what was it called? It was like Midnight Garden. Midnight Royal Midnight Court. Royal Court, yeah. I wore, I had like a Bo Peep themed cord. I had a surface spell dress on. With like some some uh, sheepy accents and lots of roses. Noble Ghost asks, does he have a name? Cyril. 
This is our beautiful sun our beautiful cereal. sun cereal. Yes. And I have a bear one that I made too. This one has a, so has a pouch in her spine, but she's falling apart a little bit. So I need to do some, some repairs, some repairs on her. Cause she was the first one I made. So I was, she was kind of an experiment. And we have cereal and I hopefully I might make a bunny rabbit one too, to go with this dress. I think that would be really cute. Um, yeah. I love him. Yes. Best Daiso. Yes, he can. Yes. He's cereal. Oh, that's so clever. I love it. <laughs> Lots of love in the chat for cereal. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Cereal a, is a good one. Okay. So I'm finding that the consistency of my icing is a little bit thin. So I'm actually going to add some powdered sugar to this and give a little touch up. Shall I? Yes. You can right. the powdered Excavate sugar. the powdered sugar. This is why we have 90 minutes, folks, for, for the adventure. We're on this journey together. Oh no! The, the set decoration. It's fine. It's fine. Don't be panic. It's fine. Okay. Any, uh, anything else I can show and tell from over here? This is a cross stitch I made a long time ago. Well, not actually not that long ago. It, all time in this time period. It's a feels small, like a long time it's a ago. small little house with some flowers. I made, uh, I stitched it together when I was at college. And I was like, I don't need to go out and drink. I'm gonna sit at home in my nightgown <laughs> and cross stitch like the grandma I am. Um, so that's that. I know someone did a cross stitch panel for the last event. That was oh, yeah. super cute. That was so cute. Um, yeah, cross stitch is a great hobby, especially when, you know, it doesn't take a lot of money. Um, the Aider, which is the, the name for the fabric with all the, the holes in it and the thread could cost you more than like $15 together. Um, I have lots of cross stitches around the house. Someday maybe I'll do a cross stitch panel. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to step on anyone's, step on anyone's up. Grift though. So she's doctoring the, the icing. icing. Rose Frey says I'm cross stitching as we speak. Yes. Oh, perfect. What are you what are you cross stitching, Rose? Rose, whoever's the, the, the mod at Rose Frey who's, who's chatting. I was cross stitching a pin to go with this, and I did not finish it in time. I was too uh I was too, uh, what's the word? Ambitious <laughs> with my cross stitch, but that's okay. Perhaps that pin will make appearance at another time. It will make appearance another time. How's your, how's your icing going, dear? Oh yes, this is better. We better. Some badges that I can wear, yay. Uh, Ray is rosé for right now. Hello, Ray. <laughs> she is all of rosé for. Oh my goodness! Every single aspect we've got, we've got the 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 the, uh, the MVP, the MVP of the panel here with us today. Okay, let's see. Let's do this a little better. Right, let's check these. These are just starting to get set here. Hmm. Can we see? You know, they are set enough that I can pick them up. You can see our little cookies here. When you touch them, they're already dry and it's only been like five minutes. Mm. So they're a little soft. You see if I press it too hard, it's going to indent. Um, let's give it another minute or two and then we will go ahead and fill these guys and I'll show you my tricks huh. for getting those cute little decorations on them. And I will fuss with the camera again. Hopefully people can see. There we go. That's better. Give our colors another little stir. So for the details, I'm actually using toothpicks instead of bothering to pipe something this tiny. Um, you could do little parchment cones, 
but I feel like that's a little bit tricky for newbies. So toothpicks actually give you really nice control. Especially when you're doing something that's tiny. This small, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're mixed up and ready to go. And I'm actually not going to change my piping tip since my icing is a bit thinner than I originally planned. So my tip for flooding these is to start from the bottom and work up. It's going to give you a way easier time if you can see what you're doing, basically. If you work from the top down, you're basically covering your work as you're going. So I'm going to go ahead and put some pressure, flood these little guys. For the ears, just two little pipes up for the wings, a little bit to the edge. Make sure I get his face. Guide this over to our shape. Set him over there. Mm -hmm. Cute. Yep. So basically, with the flooding, just make sure to get the um, the key parts of his shape. So let's start one dollop for the foot, a little bit over here for the tail, and then go up. The arm is another key silhouette, so we'll do that and we'll come back in, fill this area. Make sure you have all your your shapes defined so it still reads rabbit. Yes, and then we'll come up for the face. And for the ears, one line up, a second line up. And there we are. Set that to the side. So again, if you're working with a bigger cookie, feel free to adjust the consistency of your icing oh, so that you can get it to oh, dribbling up the back, back here. Oh, no. <laughs> so that you can get a um, a consistency that will really fill your cookie the appropriate amount. I love how it gets so quiet when she's piping. And you gotta focus. Serious business. <laughs> we have all have assimilated into raise the hive mind. Just become oh, Rose for Ray. <laughs> Rose Ray is now Skynet. <laughs> she is Lily Danette. We've all Voltroned into one giant Lita army. It's rose rose four, right? There you go. That's right. People are saying it's quite satisfying to watch you pipe. Oh, good. I'm glad. For one, um, I think the first Valentine's Day we were together, she piped to me a whole box of was it this recipe of sugar cookie? It was this one, um, and I had added um, lemon zest and lemon zest. Uh, what, was, what else was it? Lavender, Lavender extract, yeah, to the cookies. And she did all these gorgeous pipings on them. And um, everyone was telling me that they were too good to eat. And I was like, well, if you don't eat it, then what? <laughs> then I ate them. <laughs> I'm gonna grab another toothpick here. So one other thing to be aware of with your icing is if you get these little air bubbles, just take your toothpick and just poke them out. Hmm. Just to get a super clean surface to work with. So I'm gonna do the ears and the eyes now. So maybe a little less than that. Just got some pink icing on my tip and I'm gonna start again from the bottom up and just kind of brush stroke the ears on. 
Don't put too much icing on or it will be a little harder to control. But again, on and up. And a little drop of pink for the nose. And then, just like we did for the nose, a little drop for the eye. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here for the rest of our little bunny brigade. Whenever I'm doing super delicate stuff like this, all I can think of is SpongeBob. And all I know is fine dining and breathing. <laughs> all I know is icing and breathing. <laughs> all you know is icing, Lolita, and breathing. So when you're painting on these features, um, you do want to still be sure to do it while your icing is still in a liquid state so that those features can all blend together and be give the appearance of just having been one solid piece of icing. <laughs> this rabbit down here looks like he got hit oh, by dear. a car. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a little bit, a little bit run over. That that's it's a little. Soda. It's a little bit water shipped down down here, but it's okay. <laughs> that, my friends, is what happens when you put too much icing on. So, <laughs> oh, a learning lesson. <laughs> I'm sure he will turn out beautiful. Yes, he will still be part of our basket, or not. The bunny became a puddle. Yeah. Maybe we could make the bolt, the, the, the bottom, the puddle bunny entirely out of swirlies. Oh, yeah. Like make him the most mystical the rabbit. The most mystical rabbit. He's going on a psychedelic mystical adventure. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what we can do for you, my little friend. So if you do end up with icing that's run off, again, too thick is your friend. Just take it in there and clean up. Anything that you didn't want there. Hmm. Looks good. I'm gonna rinse my hands really quick. I really love the um, just the uh, spring page. Too. <laughs> there we go. Bunnies. Bunnies, bunnies. So I am going to let those guys set for a second while I get my second piping tip. Oh, it's still on the face. Um, and get our purple icing for our wings. Hmm. What other? Ooh, mushrooms would be cute. Oh, mushrooms would be really cute. Mushrooms would be cute. Stars, hearts, cats. Cats. Cats would be very, very cute. Cats would be cute. Butterflies. 
anything. I think I would love to see people do this with butterflies. That would be really, That'd be really pretty. Okay. Set this bag down in another truck. And get going with our purple icing. So gonna, we have about 10 minutes left. So we're gonna we're gonna crank it here. So we're gonna finish showing you guys the wing colors here. I'll put the camera down and I'll well she's she'll I'll show how about you can show one of the wings and then I'll get out the um, rice krispie treats. Yes, that sounds perfect. It's so funny how we simplified our recipe and gave ourselves an extra time and an yeah. extra half an hour and we're still like, oh my god. You know, baking takes time. It does. So I'm going to do this one that we already filled the main wing on. Or actually, no, I'm going to do the one next to him. And I'm just going to really delicately flood that. Definitely a thinner consistency than I wanted, but that's okay. And again, swirly, swirly. I'm just going to drop a few bits of blue. And whoop, get some more pink. Some bits of pink on there. And then trace through those. Nice marbled effect. To we create use a, a clean one. A mystical marbled effect. And there you go. There you have it. There is at least one completed fairy <laughs> bunny. All right, I'm going to put the camera down and then I'm going to go grab the Rice Krispie treats and we can demold those guys. Um, Nicole Go says, why is there no glitter? Well, the glitter would be something I would add to this mm. when they're dry. If you have like um, food grade glitter and mm. you just want to brush it on when they're dry, that would be the perfect final touch. Mm -mm. So if you want to get your Rice Krispies here, I will keep decorating these wings. Okay. I'm just trying to set you up so people can kind of see you. Yeah, there we go. All right. I'm going to deflate. Let's see what we've got this done. I've got, that's yeah, fine. Ta-da! The Rice Krispies! Alright, I need a small spatula. You want a spatula? Yes, you just come up here. Oh, yeah, wow. Thank you. Alright, I'm going to pop these out. And see. Put me over here. Oh, endless camera troubles. Usually, usually we don't have this many uh, camera issues. I don't know what's happening today, but thank I appreciate you guys being patient with us. And our, and our tribulations. And our tribulations. We're, we're very focused on the, the, the decorations and the actual recipe. And we were like, yeah, 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 the technical stuff will be fine. And then uh, but something every time is a learning experience. Very true, very true. And I'm gonna I'm reusing the um, parchment that, we that, that you bake the bunnies on, on to depan these. And they're still a little bit soft, but that's fine because they're still holding their shape, so it's, it's all right. And she's piping like the wind over there. All 
sorts of fun things you could do with your um, Rice Krispie Treats. You could put M&Ms in here. You could put pretzels. You could put Reese's. Reese's, by, Reese's Pieces. Oh, yeah. We were even thinking of um, putting in some raspberry powder. Oh, yeah. That would have been great. To make them pink. Um, and we have our cookie base. We have here. our cookie base. And so I'm just going to take, we have a small, these are all the ones that we didn't eat. <laughs> of um, Some we have boiled eggs. We've got regular chocolate eggs. We've got malted milk eggs, and we've got little gummy candies. So I'm just going to go ahead and do arrange with whatever, whatever the mood, whatever, whatever mood, whatever the fancy, is. Whatever the fancy strikes me. Some gummies. Mom always do does really fancy um, table decorations for Easter too. Like I remember, um, uh, also my aunt too. At my aunt's house, everyone would get together, and she would have the entire um, dining table completely awash with jelly beans and chocolate eggs. So as you were eating your regular Easter dinner, you could just be popping candies in your mouth <laughs> the whole time. The best experience, which is uh, which is a very uh, which is very good. And I'm just filling all these. Just, just okay. So we've got four minutes left. So we are going to. Are those going to make it? Um, we can show them how you you would assemble one. I've got okay. at least one that's standable. Okay. So here we have our. Build baskets. Lyrical Nari says a cozy nest, and Elia says such cute nests. <laughs> yeah, these are really cute. And if you if you like 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 we were saying, if you don't wanna, if you're not ready, if you're not able to commit to you know making the whole shebang, the whole shebang, just make the some nests. Parts of them are great. <laughs> yeah, just make some nests. It's all good. More green. Okay, I'll stop fussing with you. Continue. <laughs> I'll sit here okay. and eat gummies quietly. So I'm just going to move one of these nests and show you guys. So we have our base cookie. And what you want to do with yours, if you want to assemble the whole thing, is just put a dollop of icing down just to hold your... Nicole goes, oh, gee, she shakes. <laughs> yes. Just to hold your basket in place so it's not wiggling. And you'll want to put it in the center there. And then I'll grab our finished one to show you. So you can see we have the bunnies and the nest in there in the center. And what you want to end up doing is finding where does your bunny and the Rice Krispie meet. So, so you have two points of, of adherence. Of adhe oh, hold on. Of, of adhe adhesion. 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 There you go. That's, that's the how to conjugate. So take your bunny and a little icing at the feet and place it against your nest and hold it there. And for our little guy, oh, dropping him. Find out where the bunny and the edge of your nest meet and then put a dollop of icing there. So See your whole support. And you'll do the same thing and just go all the way around. Da -da -da. Goes off in front of the camera. Yeah. And then, yeah, just gonna continue all around the edge. And then I will bring us back over here so we can look you all straight in the eye as we say <laughs> as we say goodbye to each other. Thank you for joining us for this and being so patient with all Thank of you our being patient challenges with all of today. our all of our challenges. I think because last time the things we made didn't involve as much close as much as details. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll so work on that for next time. We'll work on that for next time. So we do apologize. 
Um, be sure to fill out the survey um, mm -hmm. for the panels. Let us know what, what you liked, what you thought could be improved. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of fun. We hope that you guys had fun with us. Hope that you guys had fun with us too. You can check us out on Instagram. Make sure to follow Rose Frank on Instagram and Twitter. Um, what else do I want to plug? Make sure to donate to the raffle mm -hmm. charity drive. Yep, yep, yep. Um, what else? What else? Stay tuned for the rest of the great panels that are going to come up. Yeah. The fashion walk is right after us, so I'm looking forward to catching that. Yeah, and if you didn't catch um, Elliot Chan Dimensions, um, uh, savory, savory panel. panel that was last night, and then mm -hmm. I think even later in the evening last night there was the uh, antique, antique vintage sodas. sodas. Yep, mm -hmm. panel which we also have to catch. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, yeah. Oh, thank you, you Elliot. Elliot. Well, thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you. This was so much fun. Thank you. Oh, we're, we're so, so happy glad you, you guys, guys enjoyed it. <laughs> you guys bared with us. Yes. Let us know again for the survey uh, if you want to see something for next time. Yeah. Let us know. We'll we, do our best. We had an idea. We don't know how it's gonna if it's gonna pan out or not. But we were thinking of for those people who live in the Bay Area in uh, Japantown. There was a crepe place. Mm -hmm. They would make crepes with ice cream in them, and then they would decorate the ice cream to look like little bears. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking maybe we could try and recreate Some that. Spin on that. Um, yeah, so we thought that would be really fun and also kind of nostalgic for the Bay Area folks that live near us. And we used to have our uh, meetings, our monthly meetups in Luda at Japantown, so that would be fun. Yeah. All right. Yes, happy crypt, says Rosie Frey. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, much for joining us.